Remarkable developments are unfolding. SpaceX is reportedly working to recover components of Booster 11, which splashed down into the sea following Starship Flight 4. This recovery effort could provide crucial insights into the mission. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues to enhance its system in preparation for the upcoming booster catching operations. In other industry news, Blue Origin has introduced its drone ship, signaling a direct challenge to SpaceX's lead in landing technology. And finally, stay tuned for the anticipated return of Boeing's Starliner, which is set to make its next move soon. Join us on today's episode of Great SpaceX for a deep dive into these exciting updates. It has been three months since Flight 4, and while both stages successfully returned without significant issues, the attention surrounding the flight has faded. However, recent information suggests we we may soon learn more about this mission, particularly regarding the B-11 landing. A source on X hinted at new developments. A document has surfaced detailing vessel arrival times, and one vessel, the MV Haas Ridgewind, arrived on the 4th of September, noted for two pickup diver service. Its route appears close to the previous landing area of Booster 11, and images suggest it may be involved in the recovery of B-11 debris, though the images are unclear. This marks a positive development. SpaceX has not previously recovered super heavy parts from the Gulf of Mexico, but if they succeed with B-11, it will provide valuable data for analyzing the flight and making necessary upgrades. Although information is still limited, we will continue to monitor this situation and provide updates as more details emerge. I'm sure many of you, like me, are eager to see the return of B-11's components. If you are, comment 11 below. As SpaceX looks ahead, they must focus not only on the launch vehicle, but also on the launch system. While vehicle preparations are underway, significant attention has been given to upgrading the chopstick system. In August, SpaceX conducted numerous tests, including closing, opening, rotating, lifting, and lowering the chopsticks, alongside replacing or upgrading several components. The chopsticks were also tested with the B14.1 prototype, which has since returned to production. As we move into September, work on the chopstick system and the launch tower continues at a fast pace. SpaceX recently activated the lifting pins on the chopsticks following important modifications, and tests with the updated system are ongoing. Additionally, the Booster Quick Disconnect, or QD, is undergoing testing after the addition of a new burn plate. Throughout August, SpaceX also upgraded the chopsticks landing rail system, added cladding to the tower, and replaced the old bumper system with new ones. With these upgrades nearly complete, September will focus on testing the system's reliability ahead of catching operations. There's also potential for a simulated catch test using the B-14.1, which remains at Rocket Garden and could return to the launch pad for this purpose. These efforts are crucial as they are tied to the hardware testing schedule. NASA has projected a launch no earlier than September 22nd, though it could be later. Regardless, preparations need to be completed soon, including wet dress rehearsal tests and other critical tasks at the launch pad. The chopstick system will be integral to these operations, handling multiple stacking and de-stacking tasks. There is much to be done before Flight 5, a mission that will undoubtedly set new milestones for SpaceX, and we hope you'll continue supporting the team during this important phase by leaving a 5 in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's ongoing developments. In addition to SpaceX, Blue Origin has made a significant advancement as it prepares for its upcoming debut mission. The company has moved its new drone ship to Port Canaveral, a step that has been recently highlighted on Blue Origin's X page. In their latest update, they announced Welcome Home Jacqueline. This sea-based landing platform is where New Glenn's reusable booster will return home again and again after each mission to quickly refurbish for its next flight. This marks a clear commitment from Blue Origin to focus on reusability, a cornerstone of modern rocketry. Prior tests with New Glenn's aft section landing leg have already hinted at the company's expectations for the debut mission. Blue Origin's CEO Dave Limp shared on X, We hope to stick the landing on our first New Glenn launch, but if we're not successful, we'll learn. 
and keep trying until we do. To further illustrate the scale of this challenge, Limp noted, Jacqueline's landing pad is the same size as New Shepard's 200 feet in diameter. However, New Glenn's booster is 188 feet tall with seven engines, compared to New Shepard's 54 feet and single engine. The physics here are key. It's easier to balance a broom on your palm than a pencil because the broom has a higher center of mass. You'll also notice there's no bridge on Jacqueline. That's because no humans are on board during landing. For a debut flight, attempting a landing on a drone ship is an ambitious move. Even SpaceX, which has since perfected the technique, took several years to achieve this after the Falcon 9's initial launch. This demonstrates the drive of Jeff Bezos and his team to make rapid progress in rocket reusability and to compete directly with SpaceX. However, this endeavor is not without its risks. Limp's statements suggest some uncertainty around achieving a successful landing on the first attempt. Moreover, New Glenn has faced a series of recent challenges, casting doubts over its readiness for orbital flights. As for progress, Blue Origin has made strides in assembling the rocket. The first stage of New Glenn was vertically erected at Port Canaveral in early August, and the second stage has been placed on a test stand. The company is currently preparing to test the BE-3U engine for this stage. With all the hardware now in place, including the first stage, second stage, and payload, the next major milestone is the long-awaited arrival of the seven BE-4 engines, following multiple delays. Now, we'd like to remind you of another significant event happening this week, the return of Boeing's Starliner. As previously reported, the uncrewed Starliner is scheduled to undock from the International Space Station, or the ISS, on September 6th. The undocking is set for 6.04 a.m. EDT with a deorbit burn planned for 11.17 p.m. EDT. If all goes according to schedule, the crew capsule will touch down at White Sands Space Harbor, New Mexico, at 12.03 a.m. EDT on September 7th. This mission is critical for both Boeing and NASA, especially given the challenges Starliner has faced over the years. From software issues to valve malfunctions, the spacecraft has been plagued with setbacks, causing multiple delays in its timeline. A successful landing this week would be a crucial step in demonstrating the spacecraft's reliability and could pave the way for future crewed missions. NASA and Boeing are hopeful that this mission will provide the data needed to validate Starliner's systems for further testing, but there remains a level of uncertainty given its troubled history. If the landing goes smoothly, it could significantly bolster Boeing's confidence and strengthen NASA's partnership with the aerospace company moving forward. As for the two astronauts originally slated to fly aboard Starliner, their mission has been postponed yet again. They are expected to remain on the ISS until next year. In the meantime, SpaceX's Crew-9 mission will continue, with NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov scheduled to suit up in SpaceX's spacesuits for the next journey. The issues surrounding Starliner have been a topic of frequent discussion. Now, we wait to see how Boeing and NASA address the remaining challenges and whether this landing will finally mark a turning point in Starliner's troubled journey. Be sure to stay tuned to our channel for real-time updates on this important mission. To wrap up this episode, let's shift our focus to Europe and discuss the European Space Agency's, or ESA's, preparations for the Vega rocket's final mission. On September 4th, the original version of Europe's Vega rocket successfully completed its final flight, placing an Earth observation satellite into orbit. The launch took place from the European spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana at 9.50 p.m. EDT. Originally scheduled for the previous day, the launch was delayed due to an electrical issue with the ground systems that halted the countdown just hours before liftoff. The payload, the Senegal 2C satellite, was successfully deployed into sun-synchronous orbit at an altitude approximately 775 kilometers about an hour after liftoff. Sentinel-2C will play a key role in Earth observation, continuing the work of its predecessors by providing high-resolution imagery to support environmental monitoring, agriculture, and disaster relief efforts. This marked the 22nd and final flight of the original Vega rocket which made its debut in 2012. The vehicle had a stellar record until its 15th launch in July of 2019 when problems began to emerge. Despite these issues, the Vega program contributed significantly to Europe's space capabilities, offering a reliable option for small to medium payloads. The Vega is now being phased out in favor of the more advanced and powerful Vega C, which first launched in July of 2022. However, the second launch of Vega C in December of 2022 ended in failure, casting doubts over its readiness. 
ESA is planning on an upcoming test, and if successful, Vega C could return to flight by late November. If all goes well, ESA aims to ramp up launches with four scheduled for 2025 and five in 2026 and beyond. While these plans are promising, ESA faces a broader challenge. The stagnation seen in both the Vega family and the Ariane 6 rocket program has raised questions about the future of Europe's role in space exploration and commercial launches. The once glorious days of ESA's rockets leading in innovation and reliability seem to be at risk, with increasing competition from other players like SpaceX and Blue Origin. The question remains, can ESA regain its former prominence with the next generation of rockets, or will it struggle to keep pace in an industry that is rapidly evolving? What are your thoughts on ESA's future? Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.